Hello. Um, a lot of people have been asking me how to approach um, some of these extra credit questions that um, are given to us in the activity packets. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to solve them. I'm not going to solve them for you. I can't just give you the answers because then, number one, some people are going to get upset. People who worked hard to actually solve the problem, who spent time solving the problem, and then other people are just going to copy. Number two, I don't want Mrs. Roscoe to say, oh, well, you uploaded the answers, so, um, and then suddenly make the extra credit not count. So, I changed the angle right here, and that's going to completely skew all of the answers. It's also interesting because any of the people who come here just looking for answers will skip past this area, and they will probably go straight to the answer area, or toward the end of the video, so they won't actually know that this is going to be a completely wrong answer. The angle in the actual problem is 40, but here I'm doing 50. Okay, so what's the problem that we're going to try to solve here? Well, we've got the weight of B, this block B, 32 newtons, and we've got this weight of block A, 102 newtons. Um, and they're connected by some kind of cable, right? And the cable is running over this pulley. And we're assuming that the no, no force is lost because of the pulley, which isn't necessarily true, but that's what we're going to assume because we just haven't been taught anything about pulleys yet. Um, so that means that this 32 newtons right here also goes along this line right here. The same uh, 32 newtons. Okay? So these are the same. This and this. If you figure, if the 32 newton block is pulling down on this cable right here, it's going to be pulling this around, it's going to be pulling up on, or basically along the uh, ramp on this end of the cable. Right? Um, and we, what the question asks is, how, what is the acceleration if the block is at rest? What's the acceleration if the block is moving? And what's the acceleration if the block is moving, or what's the acceleration if the block is moving up the ramp? And what's the acceleration if the block is moving down the ramp? Um, I'm not going to do all of those because they're very, very similar work, but the key thing is just figuring out where the forces are pointing. Um, I'm going to do the acceleration if it's pointing down the ramp. Um, and, uh, the only difference is which way, basically, friction is pointing. Because, if, because uh, the kind of one of the pieces of the puzzle towards solving this is just note that if it start, if it's going, if it's at rest, then you're paying attention to the the what? The coefficient of kinetic or static? That'd be static friction, right? Because it's just sitting there. If it's moving, you're looking at the, co the coefficient of kinetic friction. And the thing is, if it's moving down this way, remember, mo down this way, remember, um, friction always opposes the motion, so that means that the friction is acting upwards, along up the ramp. Whereas the block is moving up the ramp, well then friction is acting down the ramp. So, it's, um, I'm only going to solve kind of like one small piece of this problem. Okay, so how do we even begin to approach this problem? Well, we can say that, okay, so we have some sort of force of, grav of the gravity here, or force of A in the x and y directions, right? Um, we know that this bit right here, that's the same 50 degrees, right? Hopefully we're getting used to seeing that by now. Um, and then we can solve real quick. Let's just solve for what each of these vertical and horizontal pieces are. So you can say that Fa in this x direction, right? Fax is equal to, well, turn your head way to the side, and you'll see that if this is the x-axis right here, if this is kind of like the horizontal, then this right here is the vertical, and the height we know is sine. You could also look at it as opposite over hypotenuse. So it's the sine of 50, but it's not just the sine of 50, because remember, sine goes from negative 1 to 1. It's the sine of 50 times the full force. So it's basically the portion of the force in that direction times the overall force. 
Um, so that's what we get for that applied force, or, ra or like that, the force of A, the amount that gravity is pulling the, the block down the ramp. Then we also have that the force in the y direction, right, right here, that's going to be equal to the cosine times the cosine 50, right? And you see, that's a bit odd because to us because we always think, oh, cosine is for a horizontal, sine is for vertical. And that would be true, except for you got to notice that this triangle is tilted on its side. If we had this angle right here, then yeah, sine would be the height and cosine would be the length. But we have to pay attention to where the angle is and what way we're looking at it. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. It's just kind of like if you turn this triangle, so that way this was the bottom, well then the sine of this would be, it, it would still be this side. So I mean it's just potential source of confusion. Don't let it get to you. Oh, I hope you, I hope it uh, doesn't confuse you too much. And we also know that this portion in the uh, in the y direction is going to be equal to the normal force, right? Because that's just what that normal force is. Because there's going to be an equal force pushing away from this uh, surface to make sure that the block doesn't go through the ramp. Okay, so what do, what values do we get for each of those? Let's take out our handy dandy calculators. Um, let me open up another text box. Uh, for our final answer, we get FAX equals FAY equals FM. I'm just setting up so I can put in numbers. FAX equals 102 sine 50. So we got 50, take the sine of that, times 102 equals 78.1. So 78.1. And then here, this the uh, this vertical part, or also the normal force, equals to 102 cosine 50. So we're going to go 50, take the cosine of that, times 102 equals. I definitely didn't do that right. I think I hit the equals button twice, which mul which means that it multiplied it times 102 twice. So let's do that again. 50 times co uh, take the cosine times 102 equals. There we go. 65.5. About 65.6. We'll round that. 65.6. 65.6. Okay. So now we know what the we can. Now that we know what the um, force in the x direction are, the force in the y direction, the normal force, we don't really need the work here. Um, so I'm just going to clear it to keep everything neat and also space efficient. Um, so how do we draw in these vectors? So we've got this um, right there, that's the force in the x direction. I'm not going to write A, it's just force in x direction. Sorry. x direction force. There we go. Hopefully it's a little bit easier to read, I don't know. And then this right here, this is the force in the y direction, or the normal force, which we have all of this going on right here. Um, what other forces are there? Well, we said that there's this force right pulling up the string, and that we also know is the 32 newtons. So we can put that in there as um, FB, right? Because it, it's, I mean, it's the same force, it's just it's getting pulled around that pulley around it. Okay, then, now the next step, this is where it actually kind of becomes a bit of a challenge. What do we do with friction? Well, let's think about it. We're saying that initially the um, the block is moving in this direction. That's uh, its movement, right? I'm just going to draw a bunch of uh, yellow arrows to show that that's how it's initially moving. Not its acceleration. Not It's not necessarily accelerating in that direction. It could be, it could not be. That's just it's uh, how it's moving. So we're going to pay attention to the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we're going to pay attention to the coefficient of kinetic friction, um, which they give us as being equal to 0.25. Uh, actually, I'm going to change that so that way it's, again, so that way it's a different problem and uh, I don't get in any trouble for anything. So 0.35 will make that. 
And then, um, what else do I have to pay attention to? Well, let's think about it. Friction, if it's going down in this direction, if the b block is moving downwards in this direction, at least at the, p at the time that we're measuring this, the friction is going to be in the opposite direction. So, the friction is going to be upwards, here, up, there. So that's going to be the force F of friction. Boom, line tool. Okay, so we've got the force of friction and the force of the block are actually kind of working together in this case, right? Because they're both kind of working to keep this block from going down the hill. Because the, if the block is sliding down this hill, friction is trying to slow it down, and then the block is trying to pull it up. So, you can see how they could be working together. What's our force of friction? Well, this is actually uh, one of the more straightforward things, one of the easier parts of um, the, what shall we call it, of like this whole chapter is you just got the force of friction is equal to the, um, the constant times the um, the normal force, so fun, <laughs> or the, the normal force. And this equation is true whether it's kinetic or static, but in this case, we're going to say the force of friction, kinetic friction, is going to be equal to the force kinetic coefficient times the normal force. We know that the, um, the, force is the coefficient of friction here that we need is 0.35 times, well, what we figured out, out our normal force was, well, that's just the 65.6 that we calculated here using our uh, our little uh, cosine. So, 65.5. And then, what do we get for that? Um, that's going to be equal to, let's take out our handy-dandy calculator. Oh, look, our number's already sitting right there. That's the same number that we put up there, 65.5, or, or 65.6. Whoops. 65.6. Uh, so then there's that times 0.35. Here, actually, let me just show you. 65.6 times 0.35 equals 22.96. So we'll say uh, 23.0. We'll round. Uh, yeah, round it. 23.0. Okay, so that's the force of friction. So now what are we left with? Okay. Well, let's kind of write out what, it, what everything's doing. First, let's write out the uh, the different forces. You've got the force of the block, right? That's this right here. You've got the force of friction. You've got, and then you've got the um, the force that gravity is using to pull down the block along the ramp, to pull the block down the ramp, and that's S X. Um, so these are the forces that we have. And just by looking at what we know, see if you can figure out maybe what, what we're going to do with each of these. We're going to kind of say, okay, this force is going in this direction. I'll use the line tool. This force is going in this direction. This force is going in this direction. But this force is going that way, right? So, if this was an xy plane, and maybe this was the, uh, the y-axis, this would be the negative stuff, and this would be the positive stuff, right? So let's write that. Um, we're going to write that we have negative b, right, because it's kind of pulling backwards, um, minus ff, right, because again, the friction is pulling backwards, and then plus the force in the x direction, because that's pulling forwards. Um, I'm pretty much out of time, but I'm going to finish up this video, uh, or this problem, in the next video, uh, and possibly start a new one. I don't know. I'll see you then.